In times of division, people often turn to faith leaders for guidance. Jeff Brown spoke to two such leaders about how they see their roles in the current landscape of polarized politics. Some faith leaders have been longtime forces in national politics, and a number of evangelical leaders have been vocal supporters of the current administration. Others tend to speak out at what they consider key moments. Late last month, leaders at the Washington National Cathedral released a very direct public message labeled a response to the president. It reads in part, as faith leaders who serve at Washington National Cathedral, the sacred space where America gathers at moments of national significance, we feel compelled to ask, after two years of President Trump's words and actions, when will Americans have enough? One of its authors joins us now. Bishop Marianne Buddy leads the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. Also with us to talk about the role of faith leaders in this political climate, Richard Land, president of the Southern Evangelical Seminary. And welcome to both of you. Let me start with you, Bishop Buddy. Why did you decide to speak out and why now? The country has become accustomed to waking up each day to a daily barrage of communication from President Trump via social media, often abusive, slanderous, and, um, and dishonest. Uh, these last few weeks, however, we felt that he had crossed a threshold of, of rhetoric that had become dangerously racialized. First, with his insults to the four women from the House of Representatives, um, insinuating that they did not belong in this country. And second, with his critique of Representative Cummings, um, spreading his attack to the entire district of Baltimore that he represents. Uh, we wanted to say two things. First, that this level of, this low level of political discourse need not be our normal for America. And second, that the president's words matter, and words such as the ones I cited have a dangerous potential to encourage others mm -hmm. both to speak and, and then to act with um, condoned violence. Richard That's Land, why we spoke. Richard Land, you have supported the president on many policies. Do you distinguish the policies from what Bishop Buddy is referring to as, the, as a dangerous rhetoric? Yes. Um, you know, if you look at the polling, 82% um, of, uh, of white evangelicals voted for President Trump. But if you talk to them, and I would include myself among them, um, probably 80% of that 82% uh, we're not voting so much for the president as they were voting uh, against Mrs. Clinton and against Mrs. Clinton's policies. And um, uh, I think that distinction is made. In fact, uh, I, I've told the president that he was my last choice in the primaries. I wince when I read some of the tweets. I've said I wish that his, his Twitter had a clutch and an editor. You wince, but uh, Bishop Buddy is calling for something much stronger. I mean, why not speak out about the implications or impact of sexual well, I, I disagree. I disagree with a lot of the uh, interpretations um, of um, uh, Reverend Buddy, um, and I think that at this particular time, uh, we need to be as religious leaders, um, not so much accusing people of, of racism or uh, xenophobia as as seeking to talk to each other, not at each other, and not in accusatory ways and seeking to uh, lower the temperature and lower the rhetoric. I've condemned racism my whole life. And by the way, I'm old enough that I've known real racists, and I know Donald Trump, and he's not a racist. Bishop Buddy, uh, what's your response? Is there not a tension in choosing to speak out and take sides at a time when another alternative would be to speak in a way, as Richard Land suggests, to try to bring people together or to lower the temperature? First of all, I would say that the president of late and indeed throughout his presidency has done almost everything in his power to divide the country. And while I understand and agree with Reverend Land that we need to be talking respectfully with each other, in a sense, um, I feel as a white American Christian leader that it's my responsibility and the responsibility of others to acknowledge the damage that has been done, and not just with the rhetoric, but with the policies themselves. You see the rise of white supremacist groups who have complete freedom in their own mind to do what they say because of the president's actions, and for him to come out afterwards and to say that he does not condone hatred 
is, um, it rings more than hollow. Well, let me let Richard Land come in because it is true, Dr. Land, that you have never been shy about speaking out about policies. So why make this distinction between speaking out forcefully on policies that you believe in, but not speaking out and suggesting we should tamp down when it's a question of rhetoric that, as we just heard, can have well, I, real implications? I said, I said that people should tamp down the rhetoric on all sides. And, and, and by the way, I hold religious leaders to a higher standard than I hold political leaders. And I think religious leaders need to tamp down the language uh, and the implication that people who support Trump are racist. Uh, that's, that is dangerous, it's inaccurate, and it's McCarthyism in reverse. It's projection of McCarthyism to say, if you support Donald Trump and you support his policies, then you're being a racist. That you're in, you're in, it's implied that you're a racist. That's simply not true. And I would hope that the people who are saying it know that it's not true. Um, you well, know, I would like instance, to make it. May I, I say I support, something? I, I support Donald Trump primarily because he's been pro-life. All right, Bishop Buddy. I think there's a real distinction between calling someone a racist, which is a personal viewpoint vis-a-vis -vis another person, and acknowledging that we have systemic racism in this country that works against and keeps certain people out of the benefits that others have. And All so right. I, I am not calling the president personally racist, but I would say that his policies and actions contribute to the systemic racism of this country. All right, I started with you, Bishop Buddy. So Richard Land, the last word? Well, I would say, first of all, yes, we have racism in this country, but we're a lot better than we were. And in terms of so-called racist policies, the black unemployment rate is lower than it's ever been. The um, Hispanic uh, unemployment rate is lower than it's ever been. The president is doing enterprise zones in inner cities, and he's done uh, prison reform. All right, Richard Land and Bishop Marianne Buddy, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you.